everybody, welcome back to Cinematically Late, the series that I talk about movies that I missed in theaters or just in general and are just now getting to now that I have some time during this COVID-19 situation. So today we're talking about Jojo Rabbit. Now this one was widely talked about, pretty popular if you ask me. Uh, it's one of Taika Waititi's films who directed Thor Ragnarok. Um, he's just kind of a goofy guy. And so this was sort of his, not his biggest movie, but I think it was his first post-Thor movie, if I'm not 100% wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about 99% of the time. So essentially, this is Taika Waititi's movie, uh, starring a kid, and he's uh, in, like, Nazi Germany. He uh, wants to grow up to be a Nazi. His best imaginary friend is Hitler, who is played by Taika Waititi. It's just sort of a crazy goofball type of movie. and. Let's just go ahead and get into my number one point. So number one point is that it was goofy, it was funny, and it humanized a very dark time in history, which was kind of refreshing in a way because you always see that obviously very dark and very somber time. Uh, not a lot of people want to talk about it in a humorous light or a positive light or anything like that, um, which is very well merited. But he essentially spins a very dark time into a comedy which is very tough to do, especially with a tragedy, worldwide tragedy. So it's a very dark, somber storyline, but they sort of undercut it and kind of stop it there, and they don't really go too deep into it. It's more of like a friendship building type of this kid, and it's just really heartwarming, but it's also like, I don't want to root for you because you want to be a Nazi. That's just not something you want a little kid to be interested in. But of course, he's growing up in that time in Germany, so it's a little bit of a different situation. So that would be my number one point. My second point is the acting and the chemistry between the actors I thought was phenomenal. Uh, the kid, whose name I'm probably not going to look up, did a really pretty good job as Jojo Rabbit, or just Jojo is his first name. Uh, Rabbit's kind of a nickname. But he does a really good job. But my main point is that Taika Waititi was funny, uh, which I think he normally is for the most part. I mean, he does like Korg in Thor Ragnarok and the Infinity Avengers movies. Uh, so I love that character. But uh, the main standout here, I think, has to be Scarlett Johansson. I think she did a really phenomenal job. She plays a single mother. She plays the part of both the mother and the father. She does this very delicate balancing act in trying to keep Jojo sort of away from the Nazi sort of regime, but also wanting him to be himself. So it's a very tough struggle that he wants to grow up to be a Nazi, but at the same time, the mom is sort of doing some more not so idealistic for Nazi Germany tactics and things behind the scenes. And I think that was what really sold it. The heartbreaking scene for me though, um, this is probably a little bit of a spoiler, uh, involves Jojo and a pair of shoes. I think that was probably one of the hardest hitting points of the movie um, that I kind of just had to take a minute to stop and reflect and think about this kid and uh, Scarlett Johansson's character. And it's just kind of tough to watch that scene. But the rest is very much lighthearted. Sam Rockwell does an amazing job. He's actually a lot of fun. Uh, the guy that was played Theon Greyjoy in um, Game of Thrones, he's sort of like this weird side character. But the kids are really the heart of the film. And they are, hands down, probably one of the best parts outside of ScarJo. I'm just going to end on the third point because we don't really need to go into a ton of it. So the third point that I want to make is Taika Waititi's style. Now, watching this movie, this was the first one that I ever saw that was just his movie. It wasn't an Avengers movie. It wasn't a Marvel-based property. It was just his sole movie. Now, I know he has another one called The Hunt for the Wilder People or something along those lines um, that my buddy Archer loves. Haven't seen that yet, but it's on the list. Um, but this one, it's unique. It's something that's very different. It's a premise that you would think is difficult to watch, but it's kind of a breeze at the same time because it's not about those that evil Germany that you are so familiar with. It shifts that perspective, and it feels like a completely different time um, and different subject matter. So it's actually kind of refreshing in that way. But if you're not familiar with Taika Waititi's style or his quirkiness, his just sort of zaniness, this might be a little bit more off-putting, unless you're a fan of Wes Anderson, because this felt very much like a Wes Anderson-style type of movie. Maybe it was just because um, Taika Waititi was doing more of a period piece, but that was just my sort of impression that I got, that 
It's not exactly Wes Anderson. It's a little bit more goofy throughout, but it's very much along that style. So if you like Wes Anderson movies, you'll most likely like Taika Waititi's movies, especially this one, at least as far as I know. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Those points, three points, I think it was, are pretty much all I wanted to talk about with this movie. If you guys have seen Jojo Rabbit, make sure you let me know in your comment section down below, in the comment section down below, sorry. Um, also make sure while you're down there to leave a like, as well as subs subscribe if you're not already. Now we want to make sure you're subscribed because I am on the road to 300 subs. I'm trying to get anyone to subscribe to me at this point. So if you can share this with your friends, if you can get anybody to watch this, even if it's just me rambling for X amount of minutes, I would greatly appreciate it. Also make sure you're subscribed because I have a new episode of Cinematically Late every single Thursday for you in the YouTube world. I uh, have that upcoming all the time. Uh, also, I have another video upcoming if it's not already posted on my channel talking about movies and where you can find them digitally uh, to purchase. Uh, it's not affiliated with anybody. It's not like trying to sell you anything. It's just mainly me talking about if you're a lover of movies and you like to own them, this is a good resource or good resources as to where you can source that if you want some options during this COVID-19 stay-at-home situation and you don't want to have to order everything from Amazon, although you can. So make sure you subscribe for that one. Uh, but really, those are all my thoughts on Jojo Rabbit. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.